Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring in Seattle, and this is podcast number f- 26, I think. What is it? April 13th or April 12th? I don't know. I This show is on every Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. It's April 13th, 2017. I'm Shannon Kringen, your host. How are you guys today? I don't know how many people actually listen, but if you are listening, thank you so much. I really appreciate every single person that listens, even though I'm very self-absorbed and very caught up in my own thing, thingy Mick Jagger, I do appreciate people listening to what I'm saying. So I've been going through a challenging time. As usual, my work is going just fine. My personal life and my family life is more challenging. My forte seems to be working, making money, being useful to others. So I'm grateful. I've never really been unemployed ever since I was about 15 years old. I've been pretty much working nonstop and I'm now 48. Never got married, never had kids, had an abortion in my 20s, long story. Got pregnant with a wild hippie who was polyamorous and didn't believe in marriage or pretty much any rules of society and wanted to just live on a commune and have a bunch of babies with a bunch of women. And I was too afraid to quit my job and didn't want to be a welfare mother, etc. So I had an abortion. So uh, I regret the whole thing, regret getting pregnant in the first place. But what I was going to say was today on the Goddess Creating Podcast, I'm going to talk about synesthesia and gender, the gender spectrum of male, female, transgender, androgyny, etc., just my own personal opinion about that. I am not, I am a female in a female body, um, but I do feel like I'm in touch with my masculine side. So I'm just going to talk about my perspective on that and what I think about people who are so judgmental about people being male, female, or trans, or non-binary, etc. And I wanted to talk probably about healthcare and Trump and Gorsuch, what's the guy's name? All of the thugs that he, that they are pushing in, all of the mafia. This country is, the USA is, is turning into a large corporation. They may as well change the name to Trump USA Incorporated, paint the White House gold and call it good, turn it into a corporation, maybe a for-profit casino with fountains that waste water, maybe dump a lot of toxic waste and build a really ugly golf course behind the White House. But let's just say I'm happy to be alive and I'm sorry that I sound so negative and I'm just, I love the new Joan Baez song, Nasty Man, that's what I was going to say. Nasty Man by Joan Baez. Have you guys heard that song? Why don't I just find the lyrics right now? I know that it's on here somewhere. Nasty Man by Joan Baez. There's a line in it where she talks about all the pretty roses turn up their noses. That's the part that really makes me cry. I'm going to put it on right now. Joan Baez. Nasty Man. I saw Joan Baez live twice. I recently also had trouble with my uh, mom, and I was going to talk about that. I was going to talk about one of my issues, which is emotional incest. So here's a little song. This is the Joan Baez about a man gone wrong while building up his evil empire. After months and months of papers, oh, papers got the guts, ifs and buts, to call the man of the year a liar. To call the man of the year a liar. I love this Joan Baez song. These are just some of the lyrics I'm reading. Hustling and bustling across the big green lawn. Stomping through the famous rose garden. But every little rose turned up its pretty nose. Saying, you owe the earth a pardon. You owe the earth a pardon. That's the part that makes me cry. Then she goes on, Joan Baez goes on to sing about the nasty man we call President Trump. Fumbling and bumbling through the halls at night, turning every light switch on, searching for the room where you used to be the groom, but she's packed all her jewelry and gone. Yeah, she scooped up all her jewelry and gone. Well, the former residents and Mrs. President left you corn and lima beans and tomatoes. You said, rip them all out. They'll only give me gout. And that's unbecoming for a future dictator. 
That's unbecoming for a future dictator. Again, I'm reading Joan Baez's lyrics from her new song called Nasty Man about Mr. Donald Trump, the mafia guy who runs this country. Big, yeah, the bigliest wall. They're going to build a big, the beautifulest wall around our borders, the bigliest wall. But here's what I think. You better talk to a shrink because you've got serious psychological disorders. You've got dangerous pathological disorders. Well, that's my little song about a man gone wrong. He's nasty from his head to his feet. When the dirt on this man finally hits the fan and no one gives a damn about his tweets, he'll be finally and forever obsolete. So that is like my favorite new Joan Baez song. And I just wanted to read those lyrics. I love what I love about her song is that it's written from a place of love and compassion and and it's it's like instead of it being a very angry song that uses lots of cliche words about money and military industrial complex and war and banks and corruption she mostly just uses words about the rose garden and vegetables and wanting to rip out the vegetables and you know, make a statement about the environment and use the word bigliest wall. So I feel like the song is a little bit funny, a little bit cute. And it's written from a a love perspective in terms of speaking truth to power. And it's like a protest song. And yet it's written with love. And what I like about it, again, is that it's not, it's not like super angry. It's more sad and loving and honest about the negativity that this nasty man, Donald Trump, you know, his nasty personality, he just gets nastier and nastier. So it's just so bizarre how many different things they're doing that are so awful. So that's what I wanted to say about that. So I love the new Joan Baez song. Sorry, I'm so repetitive. I'm very OCD. And I suffer from various psychological disorders myself. So I think that I was raised by people I love my mother and my father, and I still see them regularly. Um, They divorced when I was four, and I'm just kind of a little bit obsessed with trying to overcome some of my childhood things. On some level, I still feel like I'm nine years old. Nine was when my mom decided we would leave San Diego, and I just can't seem to grow up in a certain way. Uh, It looks like I'm going to be in a play in Fremont. Sorry, I'm changing the subject. Suddenly I realized I should say something positive. Here's something positive. It looks like I might play the part of Audrey Horn in uh, in Fremont this summer at the West of Lennon Theater. It's at 203 North 36th Street, Fremont, 98103. And it's, it's based on... Twin Peaks and it's going to be July 7th through 9th and 14 through 16. I think we're going to perform it five or six times. I think Friday, Saturday and then a Sunday matinee. So I'm really happy that I'm probably going to be in the play. I auditioned and somebody said yes to me. So I'm going to play Audrey and I don't really know what that entails yet. But I'm happy about being in a play. Last week, I talked about meeting Jeff Bridges, the actor, and being an extra in a film called American Heart, directed by Martin Bell, which Jeff Bridges was was the executive or one of the executive producers on. Long story, I talked about it last week. If you're curious about it, just go and find Goddess Kring podcast number 25, and you can hear about it, or just email me. My website is shannonkringen.com. Again, this is Goddess Kring, podcast number 26. You're listening to Hollow Earth Radio in Seattle. I also archive this podcast on my YouTube channel with my visual art as a slideshow and Patreon, Bandcamp, and Mixcloud, and it's all free on all those different websites, so it's always free. I share my work for free because I make a living as an art model and I deliver groceries sometimes. That might change, but off and on I've been delivering groceries to fill in the modeling gaps and I'm kind of tired of having to chase after every single modeling job I can find. I've done this for 25 years and I still love to model, but my body needs a bit of a break from that and so what I do is I 
I deliver groceries with a smartphone app every once in a while. And uh, what's sad about me is I'm kind of a workaholic. I am financially in a place where I can afford to take a couple days a week off. Like a lot of people work five days a week and they take two days off. I tend to work seven days a week and I don't have to. Like financially, I'm okay. I'm low income, but I'm okay financially to the point where I could like get a massage every once in a while at the Chinese place that's only $27. And I could occasionally take a day off and just rest or do my artwork. But instead, I insist upon pushing myself to work every day as an art model, sometimes two or three gigs a day. I also deliver groceries, like I said before. And the money in the grocery delivery really, really varies a lot. So in terms of how much I make per hour, minus taxes, minus gas in my car, It's very kind of exhausting, but I feel like, you know, I don't drink or smoke or do any drugs. I don't even like smoking marijuana. And it seems like my addiction is to work and to make money and to feel useful. Part of that is a reaction to my childhood. My parents met when they were young and divorced when I was four, and they just really didn't belong together. And uh, I feel like there was some, hey, my kitty, kitty, kitty. My cat's freaking out. Hey, kitty, kitty, my kitty's freaking out. Hello. Come here, Kisun. Sit on my lap. My kitty's going to sit on my lap now. Kisun. I have a big orange fluffy cat. His name is Kisun. I adopted him about two years ago, and the vet thought he might be diabetic. To make a long story short, I switched him to a raw meat diet, um, not just raw meat, but frozen and freeze-dried raw meat from the health food pet store. And he right away took to it really well. And a lot of cats are really picky and they won't just suddenly switch food. But he acted as if, oh my God, where has this been all my life? I love this. And so he immediately loved, I was feeding him natural grain-free food from the health food pet store, but it was canned and some dry kibble which was grain free, although I noticed that it had potatoes in it instead of wheat, which is no good. Uh, Cats really don't need carbs and potatoes, so that can make them diabetic, actually, just like humans that eat too many, too much sugar and too many carbs can become diabetic. And in fact, you can, don't let doctors lie to you, and this is not medical advice, I'm not a doctor, but as a civilian human being who has experimented with my diet, I know that if you take sugar and carbs out of your diet, you can improve your health tremendously. So some people have actually, I'm not diabetic, but some people have not needed insulin anymore after they cut the sugar and the carbs out of their diet and increased healthy fat and protein and cut way down on carbs. I eliminated eliminated wheat and bread from my diet like three years ago (coughs) and my health has improved tremendously. I had a thyroid issue which is now gone and my thyroid is normal so my moods also got better. I'm still pretty moody but I'm a lot more stable than I used to be without eating any wheat or bread. So I will say that my cat is sitting on my lap right now and I'm really happy about that because he's a sweetheart and he sleeps with me every night. But um, I'm really happy that I can live alone and I wish I can afford to live alone, no roommates. I don't think I ever want a spouse. Maybe I'll change my mind. I think I'm too wounded. I wonder how much of me is not wanting a spouse because I'm wounded and how much of it emotionally wounded and afraid. You know, there's my poem, intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. And then I say, self-abandonment got me stranded again, polluted and uprooted. Those are lines to one of my poems about being neglected as a child. But I was not only neglected by my parents, I was also kind of invaded on an emotional level. I basically, my parents both confided in me about their adult problems when I was a little kid, and I think they were looking for some kind of emotional support from me, which was inappropriate. So that was kind of a form of emotional incest, I would say, not any kind of physical thing going on there. I was not sexually molested at all as a child, but I do have emotional, incestual, 
issues. I feel like both my parents, the boundaries were blurred. And I almost felt like not like I was their parent, but like I was their peer or their equal instead of their daughter. And I felt like I wasn't supposed to have emotional needs. And I, I also have a line in one of my poems that goes tame the shame, suck the sugar cane. And what that means is tame the shame. I feel like ashamed. I don't even know <clears throat> what my emotional needs are. Sometimes I have really low self-esteem with relationships. Uh, I don't have a lot of close friends. And I think that's partly because I avoid being close to people. Hence, intimacy chasing me feel like it's erasing me. In other words, I feel like when I'm with other people that my job is to just be nice and polite and be considerate and not have needs. And so I feel confused about what I want and what I need with other people. And I find it uncomfortable and I'm afraid to trust other people, male or female. So I tend to keep to myself a lot. What I'm comfortable doing is working, making money as a, as a model, as a photographer, uh, as a grocery delivery person. I really like being around animals and plants. I really enjoy, the other day I delivered groceries to a man that was deaf and I was kind of touched and moved by his, you know, he had a hard time uh, communicating because he's deaf and I don't speak sign language and so we just texted, but there was just something sweet about, not to sound condescending, but I used to work at a Xerox place and I remember I didn't really care about being a salesperson for this company, but whenever somebody came in in a wheelchair or a handicapped person or somebody who couldn't speak English or a little kid or somebody with crutches, I always really enjoyed helping those people and being extra uh, kind and patient. So I guess the, the kind, nice part of me comes out. My heart kind of melts when I'm around people who need extra help. So I guess that's a talent of mine and an ability and, and the good humanness in me comes out when I'm in that situation. But in, in basic close relationship, friendship, you know, I don't even know how my boyfriend can stand being with me. I mean, I'm a good person, but... We've been together two and a half years and he's busy. He has a rock cover band and he has like um, a daughter and two sisters and a mother and a father that he visits. So he has family and he has, he's busy and he likes to play his guitar and he likes to be by himself. And so he's a busy guy uh, and he's a freelance photographer as well. So he's got a random schedule and so do I. So we fit together in terms of that, but he's... um. I don't know. I just don't know how he can have the patience to, like, I don't want to live with him. I don't think I ever want to live with anybody. So I don't know what I'm saying, but I don't know. I'm kind of amazed. I'm just trying to grow up and find my autonomy. I'm 48 years old. And I guess for the next 20 years, I'm just going to keep modeling for art classes. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, there might be a grant for me to go back to school and study web design, but I'm not sure if I really want to do that. But I'm really grateful for the opportunity, and I might look into that when I'm a little bit less stressed out. I'm actually quite stressed out right now, and I wanted to talk more about emotional incest and basically about your boundaries being invaded by your parents and how I felt like as a kid, I didn't know it at the time, but I felt like it was my job to take care of my parents on some emotional level. And one of the ways in which I did that was to pretend like I didn't have needs and to try to not be too needy. And <clears throat> to try to just be a good daughter <clears throat> who wasn't too needy. So I think I <clears throat> learned to suppress myself from a young age which later in life really is not good because then how do you have relationships? How do you have friendships, let alone a love life and like start your own family? I mean, I guess I've never really wanted much of a family. You know, I had an abortion in my twenties. I've dated lots of men that it just didn't work out with. And now I'm dating somebody who's a fairly stable guy, but he's a lot more conservative than me. And I don't really know if we fully fit together but we fit together better than any other guy I've ever dated. And he's a nice person. Uh, so I don't really want to say a whole lot about that. That's a private thing. But let's just say that it's it's a miracle that I'm dating somebody, I think, in my own opinion. 
Um, and I would say that I had a very, very uncomfortable relation, uh, phone conversation with my mother recently. My mom is upset because her, my stepdad died a couple years ago, suddenly long story. And he had a do not resuscitate wish in his will. And <coughs> the paramedics came because my stepfather's heart basically stopped and the paramedics came and they tried to resuscitate him. And my mom said, um, my, my husband has a do not resuscitate wish in his will. And they said, okay, can you show us that? Because we, we have to try to save him for 15 minutes unless you can show us that paper. So my mom said, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't have that sheet of paper. It was like in a safety deposit box or in her lawyer's office or something. So she could not show that to them. So basically my stepfather they tried to save him for 15 minutes and his heart just stayed stopped. So basically it was his time to pass away. And my mom just let them do their thing because legally she had to, but she felt, you know, stressed out that she couldn't give my stepfather what he wanted fully at the end of his life, which is just to let him go. If his heart wasn't going to work anymore, he did not want to be hooked up to a machine or resuscitated. So basically... My mom recently has has started worrying about my dad and my mom and when they pass away, they're both in good health right now, so they might live a lot longer. Who knows? Nobody knows. But I'm the only child of these two people, and so my mom wants to make sure. Also, I have $67,000 in student loans, and I'm low income, so right now I'm paying zero on that. I'm not in trouble with the student loan people. I'm actually on an official income-based repayment plan, which means right now I qualify to pay zero every month. I figure what's the point of paying them every month if it's not even gonna make a dent in my interest, let alone my $67,000 or 65,000 is where it started and now it's 67,000. So by the time I'm a senior, I'll probably owe about a million dollars to the student loan people, who knows? So basically my mom wants to see if I, if I inherit anything from either one of my parents, which I'm not even sure is going to happen, uh, she wants to find out if the student loan people can take away. Chances are in the United States of America, since this is such a corrupt place, uh, when you inherit something, the student loan people can probably take it from you, maybe. I don't know. We're going to look into that. So basically... My, my mom is, is worried about what is in my dad's will and what is in her will and will I know what to do when one or both of them pass away and will I be protected financially, blah, blah, blah. I don't really care about inheriting. You know, my mom is a low-income person and owns a home, but she owes money on it and she's still paying the mortgage. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. So I'm just thinking about my old age and just kind of dreading the whole like, I'm the only child of these people and I'm not really sure what the deal is. <sighs> when one of them passes away, I guess I just ask about what I'm supposed to do with terms of the will or if I inherit anything. Are the student loan people just going to take it away? What kind of social security will, will I have in 20 years when I'm 68? Who knows? You know, this country, it seems to me that this country is not really a democracy. And I think for a while it's been headed in this direction of being more like a corporation and we are customers, like average American citizens who are not extremely wealthy are basically like the 98% of us that are not <clears throat> billionaires and millionaires we are kind of like employees of the USA Incorporated, it seems to me. <clears throat> and that's a slight exaggeration. <clears throat> God, there's something wrong with my throat. Forgive me for coughing so much. I need a cough drop. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, on Hollow Earth Radio in Seattle. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. I mean, do any of us really know? I mean, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. I don't have any brothers or sisters. I'm not close. I have some uncles, but I don't know them very well. I don't have any aunts. I used to have cousins, but I lost touch with them. So I don't really have much of a family in terms of people around me, but I have my cat. I have my job 
and I have a boyfriend that's so far sticking out with me, but I don't know how long that's going to last, but we love each other, uh, and we're friends, but I don't know if it's, you know, we're not like, I don't think we're soulmates or the loves of each other's lives or anything like that, but I think we do care about each other and there's a genuine friendship and a genuine sexual attraction. And I'm grateful for that, but it's not a big romantic love fest. That's for sure. So it's just kind of a, a friendship with good chemistry and we're just, I'm just seeing what happens with that. So I don't really know. I guess that's kind of a depressing thing, what I just said. Oh, well, that's how I feel today. My mood could change. Kisun, kitty, kitty. Kisun. Come sit on my lap. Come here, boy. Come here. Come here, Kisun. How's my kitty? Okay. Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Fusion drives illusion to erosion. Erosion guides fusion to explosion. Typecast, my dragon sleeps. Monkey moon coming soon. Phases of seeing the gray balloon. If you go to shannonkringen.com or just click Kring Music, you can find my music and my MP3s. They're free to download. I guess I'm kind of sad that I work so much. I work and I work and I work and I work and then I work some more. Maybe I should take more time off. It's actually kind of sad, but I guess I'm, I'm glad I'm not addicted to a more dangerous substance. Like I don't smoke or drink any alcohol. I don't smoke cigarettes, don't smoke alcohol, I've never taken LSD or mushrooms or anything like that, except I did go to Amsterdam once and eat hash, ate a space cake, and that was awful. I'll never do that again. I thought my skin was going to fall off. I walked sideways in Amsterdam. It was really scary. So drugs are not really for me. Although I did have breast reduction surgery and they gave me morphine and I didn't know that. And I thought I was just happy. I thought this can't be a drug. I just feel happy. This must be natural. I feel so clear headed. And they said, that's, it's morphine. It's a drug. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's a dangerous drug. So that's the only drug I ever liked after surgery, morphine. So that's dangerous. But my addiction seems to be listening to Tom Petty music, which is pretty safe addiction, I'd say. And because it cheers me up, makes me feel better. Also, Tom Petty widens my jetty. He turns me on sexually big time. So what I was going to say was my addiction is work. I like to work. I like to be useful. I like to be on call seven days a week as an art model, as a medical model, that means that I pretend to be a patient and I let medical students practice doing exams. Uh, they hire men and women to help practice do exams and also to act out symptoms. They give you a script and you pretend to be a patient that has like, you know, certain pains in your body or certain symptoms. And then it's based on real cases. So they know what the real answer is. And then medical students have to guess what's wrong with you and come up with a treatment plan and practice, you know, how to treat you in a professional medical way as a patient. So the USA, I was going to say, now I'm going to flip back to the USA. We need socialized democracy. We need democratic socialism to help capitalism be less corrupt. But so I'm happy that I have a job. I'm addicted to my job. I'm addicted to working. I work and work and work pretty much seven days a week. I work every day. I also volunteer at the zoo and I don't even really do my artwork anymore. It's weird. I, like I record my voice like I'm doing right now. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. I used to paint shoes. I haven't painted in a couple years. I used to draw abstract pastel drawings and paintings on canvases. Haven't done that in over two years. I used to take a lot of photos. I still do take a lot of photos. I'm on Instagram and Flickr and Facebook and Twitter and LiveJournal and WordPress and, and LinkedIn and Tumblr and all those different websites. I share my photos and my words. I still do take a fair amount of photos, but not as many as I used to take. My apartment got broken into last summer and then I had a GoFundMe fundraiser and I was able to replace most of my cameras, at least sort of, you know, 
similar to what I had before, but not really, but I'm really grateful for that. But I have to say that I haven't been taking as many photos lately because I've been so consumed with working and making money every day. Even though I'm low income, I kind of get high and thrive on earning money. And kind of like some people like to go shopping and spend a lot of money they don't have. I don't do that. But I like to work even if I don't need the money. I like to just be making money and being useful to other people. Maybe because I don't really have a family. I don't have a spouse. I don't have any kids. I have my cat. I have a whole bunch of houseplants and I have my cat. So that's what's going on with that. And then the other thing is... USA Incorporated. I feel like a customer. I think it was Donald Trump's son-in-law, Ivanka Trump's husband. What is his name? Kushner or something? He referred to us as customers. Instead of citizens of the United States, which is a, a supposed democracy, he referred to us as customers. Like we're all customers. And I know that's how our healthcare system works. It's almost like we are customers to the commercial system of healthcare. So I would like democratic socialism to help keep democracy, I mean, to, to, well, to keep democracy alive. People think that communism is really bad and capitalism is really good. Like communism, I guess, keeps everybody poor and you have dictators bossing people around and then keeping people poor. Whereas capitalism supposedly is freedom to try to get wealthy. The thing about it is that extreme capitalism becomes similar to communism in terms of keeping everybody poor. Because if you have rich people that run the Senate and Congress and the White House, they're rich corporate people that are working for, for Wall Street and bankers and large corporations, and they're embezzling and hoarding all the money. And then they keep federal minimum wage at seven twenty-five an hour. And then they say we live in a democracy and there's like freedom, you know, to become wealthy and entrepreneurs, etc. But when they tax the poor and the middle class a lot and then they tax the wealthy hardly anything and corporations find loopholes and get out of paying taxes altogether, basically they're hoarding and embezzling all of the money and bossing us around and we are like slaves. So basically average American citizens are being kept in poverty especially because we have medical bills that we need to worry about because our medical industry is like a for-profit corporation. So that's insane. So basically, democratic socialism would be more ethical and fair and help capitalism be less toxic. So communism and extreme capitalism are actually pretty similar, if you think of it that way, that rich people boss us all around and most of us are poor. And that's basically, so I'm not like a huge fan of extreme communism, although I think the idea in communism that we're all equal and that it's not a competitive rich and poor fighting it out to make money, I don't like the competitive cutthroat capitalist society that we live in. So I wish that we had, but I don't really want this country to be communistic, but democratic socialism would work for me mixed in with capitalism meaning the wealthy and the corporations would have to pay their fair share of taxes. The military budget would be cut down and we would increase the minimum federal minimum wage to probably $15 an hour, maybe even $20 an hour. And we would have nonprofit single payer health care and eliminate all the waste and all the administrative waste and for profit and price gouging. So basically, that's how I feel about that. So and then my so there's my political ideas. And then my parents, you know, dealing with emotional incest, trying to figure out how do I become an adult as a 48 year old? How do I how do I finally try to become an adult and feel confident and secure and have more of a boundary between me and my parents on some emotional level? Because part of me still wants certain kind of validation and attention from them, but I'll never get that because they, they did the best they could and they're just getting older and my dad is actually going to move to Florida and retire. He has a new girlfriend. He's going to move to Florida. He's going to retire. I'll miss him. I'll come visit him. He's doing his own thing. And my mom is struggling financially and that's just a long story. 
but there's certain kind of emotional enmeshment that I feel and I feel like kind of a lack of sense of self, fragile sense of self, intangible desire for wealth is another line in one of my poems. So I'm just trying to figure all this out. Like, how am I going to survive? Like, I'm healthy. I eat diatomaceous earth. I eat lots of fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds. And I exercise every day and I drink lots of water. I take uh, spirulina and ashwagandha and a probiotic. And so I'm physically taking pretty good care of myself. But on an emotional level, I feel... Um, deprived, like I'm starving for a certain kind of love that I'll probably never get. And I feel emotionally kind of unhappy and I feel kind of alone and yet I like being alone. So it's kind of like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. So I like my solitude mostly. So I'm not sure what my ideal life would be. And I fantasize about moving to another country, getting away from the USA. So I just wonder what is the best thing to do to survive. Now, this is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kring in podcast number 26, April 13th, 2017, Hollow Earth Radio. Thanks for listening.
that was You Are the Carrot You Are Chasing Capiche by Goddess Kring and Claxton Kent. I recorded that with him in 2014 in Portland, Oregon. ClaxtonKent.com is his website, I do believe. We are no longer working together, but I'm happy that we did a short um, stint recording a few songs and we played live in Seattle uh, a couple places I forgot the names of at this point, but um, what can I say? I am honestly really, 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 really depressed right now. It's a windy day in Seattle, and I have the day off. I intentionally took the day off because I'm a freelance person, so I can sort of choose my schedule, generally speaking, I'm on call seven days a week to deliver groceries as well as model for art classes. About 90% of what I do is the art class and medical class modeling. So today I was going to work and then I decided not to. Uh, So the grocery delivery thing is a flexible thing that I can say yes and no to and on a smartphone app. So I decided to say no, but part of me regrets it. I don't really need the money today because I'm going to work the next several days in a row. So I'm really trying hard to stay off today. It's sad that I don't even do my artwork anymore. I haven't painted in two years. I used to paint shoes and abstract uh, pastel drawings and canvases. I haven't been painting. I haven't been writing poetry at all. Lately, when I've been going to my creative writing group, I've just been reading my diary, you know, writing down diary uh, notes and ideas and maybe some rhymy phrases, but not actual poems. So I think I'm really lost and depressed right now. There's a chance I could go back to school for web design that it would be free because of some special grant that I qualify for, but I'm really not sure I wanted to do that. And I'm feeling really out of it. I was going to try to get a massage today, go for a nice brisk walk. I do exercise every day. Mostly I walk. I sometimes ride my bike. I walk up really, really steep hills and get my cardio exercise, try to get endorphins going in my brain. I kind of use listening to Tom Petty music as a way to rev me up as well and rejuvenate and give me energy. I feel really upset that the United States is now bombing Syria. I guess we've been bombing Syria, but I do, you know, I'm not a fan of gassing anyone. That's disgusting and horrifying that anybody wants to gas anybody else. This whole us versus them mentality is really toxic that humans are this us versus them you are this, we are that, you are the bad guys and we are the good guys, therefore we're going to bomb you. And then the bad guys are like, oh yeah, well we are the good guys and you are the bad guys, so we're going to gas or bomb you. So the whole thing is insane and war only brings more war, violence only brings more violence, more hatred, more anger, more fear. So I'm really kind of disgusted that the human race continues to think it's okay to bomb people And the excuse is that some people were gassed by some nasty people and therefore we have to bomb those people, which just is more violence and more bombing. So I think the answer actually is to like what Martin Luther King Jr. said, which is to listen to the concerns of your enemies. Maybe there are some people in the world that are sociopathic and that nothing, you can't reason with those people, but trying to bomb and kill those people I don't think works because you usually end up bombing and killing the wrong people anyway, and it just stirs up more uh, anger and fear and a desire for revenge, therefore it just continues, and these people are probably doing this for money and power anyway, so it's all a sick game that humans play. So I think the answer is to send humanitarian aid, like those people that say food, not bombs. Send humanitarian aid to people in war-torn areas. Allow refugees to escape the area that is being attacked and has gassing and war, horrible war atrocities and war crimes going on. That would include Palestinians that feel trapped and want to leave, and they're not allowed to leave. Um, That would include anyone. 
Israeli people, Palestinian people, whatever, they're all humans, people in Syria, people in Iraq, people in the Bronx, in the U.S. I mean, you know, people living in this country in extreme poverty in the United States of America, we have more and more poverty, more and more homeless people. It's really sad to see. I know there's a lot of good things happening in the world. I'm just really disturbed by people who bomb each other and gas each other. And just because some people are gassed doesn't mean that bombing is the answer to try to clean up the mess. Because if you try to bomb the bad people that gassed the people, then you just create more violence. So it doesn't really solve the problem. I understand the desire to try to get rid of people that gas people. But how do we actually do that? You know, I don't think that's really possible. So it just creates more of a mess and more chaos. And we all know that the current administration in the United States, they like war, they like the military, and they like to play games with money and power and war. And they don't seem to be particularly concerned about humanitarian aid and about basic human rights. So I'm just horrified by it and embarrassed by it and scared <clears throat> and feel sad for people that are in these areas that are getting bombed and attacked by the United States, or by anyone else. So, like when I see the Blue Angels fly over Seattle doing their seafare performance, I feel like running for cover. I feel like running for a bomb shelter when I hear those loud warplanes flying over my head. I feel like saying, the Americans are coming. Run for shelter. The Americans are going to bomb us. Run for shelter. So imagine what it's like to be bombed by the United States. You know, I can't, I can't cheer on the United States bombing any country because I'm always having empathy for the people that are getting bombed. So I don't assume that we're dropping bombs on people that are 100% bad that just gas people. I assume that we're bombing and we're probably also killing plants and animals. Not enough people talk about when there's war. Plants and animals get killed along with people and the earth itself gets harmed and polluted and destroyed from bombing. So my fantasy would be to have more humanitarian aid and allow more refugees to escape these areas. And I honestly don't know how to stop sociopathic people who want to do violence. But being a hypocrite and being violent against people who are violent is just hypocritical and it stoops to their level. So you can't really put out a fire with gasoline, as they say. There's got to be a smarter way to solve these humanitarian problems. And again, plants and animals are harmed by all of the silly things that humans do when they fight wars with each other. Whether they're gassing or bombing or shooting or who knows what else they do, strange medical, military experiments. I don't know what's going on, but it's frightening. And this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. Thanks for tuning in. I will say that I am concerned about the issues that I have with each of my parents. And I am 48 years old and I'm kind of frightened that I'm fairly healthy and young for my age in terms of my physical health. But again, I'm concerned about my mental health because I don't really have a spouse. I have a boyfriend, but I don't want to live with him. And I'm not sure how he feels about everything in terms of long-term future. He's older than me. I don't know what's going to happen with he and I. I don't really have much of a family other than my mother and my father. When they pass away, I'm going to be by myself. So I don't really know what my goals are. I feel kind of trapped. I'm a low-income person. If I made more money, I would lose my Section 8 rent or my rent would get higher. My health care costs would go up and my student loan people would come after me. So I kind of feel like the only way to survive in this country is to stay low income for me. I can't speak for other people, but for me, I know people make more money than me that their bills are higher than mine and their, their life is more stressful than mine. So it's sad that in this country... It's mostly about money. So I'm not sure what to do. I'm in a weird mood. I should probably take a walk and see if I'll be in a better mood and say something 
more inspiring. That's what I'm going to do. I'll be back. I'm going to take a brisk walk and see if I feel better. Intimacy chasing me. Feel like it's erasing me. So that is a personal demon of mine. Intimacy chasing me. Feel like it's erasing me. It's a new day. And I went for a walk last night as I was recording this podcast. This is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen on Hollow Earth Radio, Seattle. And I was hoping I would feel better. But I felt worse. And I went to my boyfriend's house to have dinner with him. And I got so upset that I left. And I'm trying to figure out if he and I are compatible or not. I'm having a major issue with my mother right now. I have poor boundaries with my mother. And I feel like she is abusive to me. She is emotionally and verbally abusive to me. And then she is in denial about that because she gets into her higher self, wise mind, spiritual thinking kind of self. And she says positive things. And then she gets back into the judgmental gossipy. She basically badmouths my father in front of me. So I'm 48 years old and I'm the only child of divorced parents. And I never got married or had kids and I live by myself. And I'm still trying to heal from the trauma of my childhood. And I know it sounds whiny to say that. But I think about suicide every single day sometimes, and I've never acted upon it. I'm just being honest. Don't worry, I have a therapist. I call the crisis line. Uh, I'm fairly stable, and I don't, I'm afraid of death. But there's times when I have a strong urge to escape and avoid dealing with my issues in this life, which is that I have a mother who I feel is abusive. And I'm trying to not repeat the pattern. My mom stopped talking to my grandmother before she died because she felt unloved. My mom did not feel loved by my grandmother. And that's a whole nother long story in terms of their relationship being very kind of odd. And my mom felt ignored by her mother. And like my grandmother didn't care and was preoccupied with her own life and was not interested in my mother's artwork or my mom visiting my mom. So that's a whole nother long story. But I'll just say that I got so upset. My boyfriend was trying to help me. And he's like, Look, you know, your your mother is toxic, and you need to cut all ties from her. She injects you with emotional poison every time you talk to her. And you need to just cut all ties. And maybe he's right. But I'm afraid of repeating the pattern that my mom did with my grandmother, which was to not talk to her. And she was on her deathbed. She talked to her on the phone a couple times before she died, but didn't really see her for years before she died. So aside from helping her a little bit when she had an emergency medical situation, which she didn't enjoy doing, but somebody had to do it. So she did it. So I don't want to repeat this pattern of being estranged from my mother because it runs in my family. So I want to figure out if I can have healthier, stronger boundaries with my mom. And if she starts bringing up a topic like bitching about my father and what he's doing in his retirement and what kind of will he has or financial situation he's in in terms of my mom for some reason is obsessed because my stepfather died two years ago suddenly and it was really traumatic And my mom is still grieving that. But because of that, now I think she's thinking about her will and my father's will and what's going to happen when they pass away in terms of me. It's just, it's just a lot of stress. Whenever my mom talks to me about these kinds of things, it's like it undermines my confidence and she invades my space. So when I say intimacy chasing me, feel like it's erasing me. I mean that my mom trying to be close to me and connect with me, she has a compulsive, negative, gossipy way of doing it, which makes me feel like I there's no space for me to have my own perception of reality. You know, she invades my space. And sometimes my dad does a similar thing. He has very strong opinions. And I sometimes feel 
like there's no room for me to have my opinions. So maybe I just need to be a stronger person. I mean, that's why I did this whole Goddess Kring thing. I developed a character named Goddess Kring so that I can feel more like a hero and feel stronger and like I'm not such a victim and let other people, you know, push me around. You know, I was bullied as a kid. My mom put me in alternative school, which was a good thing that she did. But I came home from public school one day and she's like, you're going into a different school. We're changing schools tomorrow. You're going into a new school. So she very shockingly, and she had been planning this for a while, but not telling me. And she put it into place and then she told me by saying, tomorrow you're going to a new school. I'm fed up with public school. So it was very shocking and abrupt the way she did that. And one time she had to sell our piano and suddenly there was no piano. Suddenly, and we found a stray dog once and she didn't tell me that she found the owner. So I got home from school and, the, and she's like, the dog's gone. We had to give it up to the, you know, she didn't let me say goodbye to the dog. So it's like she, she, and then she also forgot to tell me that my, my grandfather was my step grand. She just blurted it out. Oh, your step grandpa. He's not your real grandpa. He, she never told me that. I said, what? I thought he was my real grandpa. She's like, oh no, your real grandpa's dead. Didn't you know that? He died in a car crash. So it's like, I never knew that. So she forgot that she never told me that. And I went to three schools in fifth grade and she got married and divorced and married and divorced and married and divorced and had all kinds of weird boyfriends. So basically I witnessed all of this and I know it's sad that I'm 48 years old and I'm still not healed from this. I still can't seem to, because I have in my current life as a 48 year old, I'm enmeshed. There's something about the way my mom and I interact, which is very toxic. It's abusive. It's not healthy. <clears throat> it's toxic. So I need as a 48 year old Shannon Kringen to develop stronger, healthier boundaries. And so I need to when sh my mom says something that I think is inappropriate or abusive, I need to say, if I say you're being abusive, she's not going to listen to that because she thinks, oh, it's your father. Your father's the bad one, not me. So I need to just not accuse her of that. I need to say, hey, I don't feel comfortable when we talk about this. I don't want to talk about this with you. I need to go now. If she refuses to stop talking about whatever it is, like usually it's something about my dad or something about one of my boyfriends, you know, she's never really liked any of my boyfriends, although I have dated some people that I had very dysfunctional connections with. But the person I'm dating now is fairly stable and I don't think she really likes him a whole lot. So this is just really like I'm starting to think that my mom does not even want me to succeed. So I'm not even sure what the truth is. All I know is that I need to either cut all ties with her or find a way to stand up for my boundaries and refuse to engage in toxic, gossipy, dramatic conversations with my mom. I need to work on my issues with my therapist and find people my own age, like friends. I don't really have too many friends. I kind of avoid being close to other people. I put almost all of my energy into my website, my artwork, hanging out with my cat, going for walks by myself. I like to get away from other people mostly because I don't feel comfortable or trust other people. I'm a very good art model and I'm very reliable and I show up and I do a good job and I'm really good at delivering groceries even though I'm a little slow, I'm not super fast, but I'm really good at work. I'm really good at providing services for people and getting paid for it and showing up on time and I'm very responsible and reliable and I pay all my bills and I don't smoke or drink. I actually hate alcohol. Somebody said they were impressed that I, I don't, I've only been drunk twice as if it takes like self-control. I actually hate alcohol. Like when I drink alcohol, I'm repulsed. So I couldn't be an alcoholic even if I tried. I can't stand the flavor and the way it makes your blood feel all warm, like it goes right into your bloodstream. I really don't like alcohol. I don't like smoking. I don't like any drugs. I, I love chocolate and Tom Petty music. I love sex. I don't like alcohol or smoking. Never have. Never, never liked marijuana. Never, ever, ever smoked cigarettes except once high school uh, graduation party. I pretended to smoke. It was awful. So... I'm not a drug person, so I need to figure out healthy boundaries. Uh, I have post-traumatic stress disorder from my childhood. 
as well as maybe a bit of borderline, a bit of OCD, a bit of cyclothymia. And now I'm thinking, okay, enmeshment, emotional incest with one or both of my parents. I need to figure out how to heal from this. And I will see you next week. I had this podcast is on every Thursday, 3 to 4 p.m. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring on Hollow Earth Radio Seattle. And don't worry, I have a therapist and I will get the support that I need. I'm just being honest about my psychological challenges. Really happy that I live by myself and that I have my own safe space. So I'll see you next week. This is archive podcasted on many different websites. Go to shannonkringen.com to see. Thank you to Hollow Earth Radio. Healing reveals the dreams. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.
cage tail from the card game day of yesterday. Nasturtium, 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 I thread it from C. Immersed in lemon cragma, Simmel slips into Torquay Rorky Town without the stench of languid light. Not old, not beta, sharp shank, shallow town without crouton, free bogosity and radical love. Crunching toast with the leggest ghost, a prey appearance in tongue sharpener. Positivity pays off in instant karma. Instant karma. Squeaked coming soon. Dreadnought. Dreadnought. Smoogy and tidbits of doom. Plug in snorks with mole peen paw slips. Yummy honey dripping. Yummy honey dripping. Yummy honey dripping. Erase. Erase. The former melon the has, former been melon has been erased, so don't even look for that so don't melon. Even look for that it, has it has been erased, and I will be gone, and henceforth, and be gone. Henceforth. from melon dome. Can, can drink, can, can drink. spit, can, can, spit. can go, can, can stop, can, go. can run, can can't hide. Can't hide. Can't hide. Can you make can look, you make can make you see, car broken, sneasel core, crumple pumpkin. An avatarded, avatarded, snub knocker, bunky sphere. Don't touch the rhombus. Steadfast, headlong, strong. Prayer song. Shine light in ocean gong. Rise up and remain. Rise up and remain. Rise up and remain. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kringen. Goddess Kring.